Well, I guess if you're going to talk trade, everybody's talking trade, and the conventional wisdom is nobody wins a trade war. But some of the historical facts don't seem to jive, do they? No, and in fact, uh, there's a great book out now by uh, Douglas Irwin, Professor Douglas Irwin, pages 380 to 420 in the book Clashing Over Commerce. He lays out the Smoot Hawley issue. Smoot Hawley came after deflation had already set in. Say it again because this is key. What was there was the problem first that created a nervous scenario that Smoot Hawley grew out of. Right. Okay. But Smoot Hawley didn't really cause it, and that's the way many remember. Right. It, myself included, because that's I'm from that age group when, when I was in university studying these things. That was a big part of it. Why but, is that important here? Well, because everybody's trying to place that on top of. You know, if you were doing a uh, a chart, you would place that, and here's the impact. The impact is wrong. The impact comes back to what you and I have discussed for many moons, which is, of course, the yield curve, because the yield curve has been indicating something about the global financial system long before these tariffs have even become, you know, a mainstay of the conversation. All right, now, let's play my favorite game, my yield curve game. Mm -hmm. All right. How many times have you heard Fed speakers and economists and, al and analysts with lots of street cred Say, how many basis points higher do you think a 10-year would be without all the policy we've seen? Oh, well, pick yeah. a number that yeah. you hear. 40 basis points, 50 okay. basis points. I hear as high as 75 basis I, points. It used to be right. 110 basis okay, points. Okay, let's just for the heck of it say it's 50. Okay. Okay? You had 50 basis points to do 84. That 30 tens to twos now becomes 80, right. which wouldn't probably bother anybody. No, probably historically. Now, poor. how significant is that? So, manipulation of rates made the yield curve flash red, but then you add in global weakness. You finish up. How are we supposed to interpret? Well, let's go. Let's go to the piece again that was written by Governor Patel from the uh, Reserve Bank of India, warning about the three pillars that were taking place here: the increased amount of Treasury bills, which was pushing short and higher; the Fed raising rates, pushing short and higher; and of course. You're, now, now you have a dollar funding problem through all of this because the United States needs more dollars. So there's now the pressure. Competition for dollars and to it, service And it debt. is flattening that curve. And we're starting to see it. As you and I discussed last week, I wasn't on, but we discussed it. If you overlaid a gold chart with the 210 curve, you would see the impact that it's having on a, on a concept that there may be some deflation developing in the system. So that's what the world is worried about because the gold has absolutely walked in lockstep with the flattening of that curve over the last four months. You know, real quickly, we have little time left. How would you proceed if you were uh, the Fed chairman with respect to trying to navigate, wanting to raise rates, but understanding all the implications that have nothing to do with our economy preventing you? Well, from you know what? It. And uh, Jerome Powell, I've had a lot of respect for him. I think he's done a good job. But stop. Stop raising the Fed funds rate. If you want to continue on shrinking the balance sheet, fine. But you don't See, know the impact no, of both. That's right. That's right. If you shrink the balance sheet, you steepen the curve. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.